I met my wife at Rutland High School in Rutland, Vermont in 1988. I went through the Rutland school system from kindergarten through graduating high school. My name is Rob Reynolds. Ellen grew up in a rural town outside of Rutland on a farm. Her school system had no high school so they all came to Rutland. We met our freshman year and became fast friends. I would sometimes go to her farm to hang out. I thought it was great that she lived on a farm but she complained about it all the time. The biggest complaint she had was that she considered her family to be poor. I didn't see them as being poor. Maybe just average but not poor. Her family worked hard but they had every necessity and a few luxuries. I always enjoyed the way their family made fresh food from the garden and sat around the dinner table talking. Many families have stopped being together for dinner. They only had one small television in the living room which I had only ever seen playing the news. Her parents were very friendly and seemed to really like me. Roy and Anne liked that I helped Ellen with her chores. Roy even started stealing me for his own special projects that were more appropriate for a man. For a month in the summer Roy and I worked on all the farm equipment and vehicles getting them into top shape. We bonded during that time. I knew that Anne was always happy to see me at the farm. She treated me better than my own mother. I became a regular fixture at the farm during summer break. Anne loved to bake using fresh fruits and I loved eating them. The most fun was the week of the state fair when we represented the host city with some beautiful animals all washed up and looking pretty. I usually helped out with the horses since that was my favorite chore. Anne entered all the baking competitions plus some quilting and knitting entries, but her passion was the hand-spun and hand-dyed wool apparel. She had a booth at the fair where she sold everything from mittens to sweaters and she made a killing. This was all her winter projects that she had saved up. It was a nice shot in the arm for the farm budget. Ellen didn't really like cleaning up manure or feeding the pigs. Obviously it wasn't what a teenage girl preferred to do but I thought those things made her stronger and more independent. She handled herself well around animals and farm equipment but her heart wasn't in it. She longed for a different life. My family wasn't any better off. My dad was an insurance agent. He had good months and bad months. During one of his good stretches he was able to buy a big house close to the city center. He quickly converted the upstairs into room rentals. He had four boarders upstairs to help with expenses. They were mostly old people. Mom wasn't excited about other people being in our house but what could she do? I had a great four years in high school. My favorite classes were in art. I took every art class they offered and even paid for some private art classes. We had a good Votech program which I took advantage of since I loved working on cars and trucks. Something about the smell of oil and gas makes me feel calm and happy. I started dating Ellen once we realized we were more than just friends. I had lots of friends and a decent career in basketball. I partied a lot and got in trouble a few times. My grades were fair to average so going to college was pretty much out of the question unless I wanted to pay my own way. It really wasn't my thing anyway. After graduating, I quit my job at a local restaurant to join my best friend at an auto body shop in Center Rutland. It was decent money and hard work but I considered it free education, no actually, I was getting paid to learn some skills. I had a vision for the future in my head that involved loads of work and some time. I already had a good foundation in engine repair. So I learned how to detail cars and trucks, then I learned how to fix dents and rust, lots of rust here in Vermont. I learned to weld, and my favorite was learning to paint cars. Ellen and I dated exclusively in our post-graduation days. I spent enough money on her to keep her interested in me, but I also started squirreling away some savings. I still lived at home but the long-run goal was to save enough to get an apartment. I hoped that someday I could afford to live with Ellen. I had to admit at least to myself that I was in love. Ellen was still living at home as well. Most kids in this area need time to get out on their own. She wasn't making any money since she was working on the farm for her parents. I know she was frustrated to still be working on the contemptible farm. At least it was a symbiotic relationship. My parents got nothing out of the deal, but they told me that after one year I would have to start paying rent. I worked hard at the garage. I got two raises promotions in six months and since I had some artistic talent my boss, the owner, Danny, started teaching me how to do custom paint jobs. I was in heaven and really admired Danny for the business he had built. The paint jobs that we were doing were high quality. Nobody complained about the big prices Danny charged. Bottom line was I made him lots of money. At the end of my first year, Danny offered me another nominal raise. 
I was a bit offended by the offer. I knew what my talent was bringing in for him. Word of mouth had people lining up to get airbrushed masterpieces added to vans, cars, motorcycles, motorhomes, really anything or freehand pinstriping or the most fabulous shiny perfect paint jobs. I held out for top dollar and Danny understood what he had. His business was booming in all areas just from the reputation my painting had given us. I agreed to pay rent to my parents since it was much cheaper than renting my own place. They charged me what a room upstairs costs but I still got fed regularly and my mom did my laundry. I didn't need freedom that badly. Besides, Ellen and I were not to the point of living together yet. Our dates were mostly a simple dinner and a movie or roller skating or dancing. It had only been six months since we next step in relationships for the first time. Yes it's difficult when you don't have your own place. There are plenty of deserted roads outside of town, though, where we could park. Our first time experiencing was in the cab of my pickup out on Quarterline. This was a big hangout for underage drinkers and the cops left us alone there. Upwards of a hundred kids would line the road and hang out by the quarry. There was always a huge fire that guys would jump through or walk over. We could swim in the quarry if it was warm enough. It was normal for couples to go to a car and make out. That's what Ellen and I did. I was super gentle with her and I'm pretty sure we were the only 18-year-old couple left in Rutland or it seemed that way. We were both fairly drunk. We were a ways down the road so nobody was nearby. I jumped into the cab. We weren't ready for an accident especially since I needed to get my plans rolling first. I'd love to say it was romantic but it was neither. I knew it would get better with experience and she knew it would feel amazing going forward. After the first year following high school, Ellen started pressuring me to get a place where we could live together. I promised her that I would get us a place as soon as I had enough money saved. It was risky to keep putting it off but I made it to the end of the second year before I went ahead and got my own one-bedroom apartment. Not only could I afford it but I would still be putting away savings. Ellen was ecstatic. We moved in with no furniture other than a mattress and some milk crates. I had a boombox and she had some pots and pans that her mother gave her. Honestly the mattress was all we needed for a few weeks. We shared a moment every chance we had. Eventually I started taking Ellen out on Saturday mornings to hit the local yard sales. We were able to pick up some nice pieces of furniture that we could keep for many years. This was about the time we professed our love to each other. I was watching her in awe as she was shearing sheep, which is not easy. I can't do it but she made it look easy. You know I'm in love with you, right? She grinned at me and my heart grew bigger. You profess your love while I'm shearing sheep? I would have preferred a candlelit dinner but I'll take it. And you, Robert Reynolds, I love you more. Ha <laughs> ha. She grinned an even bigger grin. The joy in my heart at that moment was almost unbearable. We made plans that made it clear we would be getting married someday. We haggled over how many kids we wanted and who was changing the diapers, all that fun stuff. My goal was to open my own business within the next two years. I didn't tell Ellen. I know I know. Communication in a relationship blah blah blah, but she wouldn't have understood why I had to save money. If she knew about it she would want to spend it. Her frugal upbringing made her crave more money. Sorry that's wrong, she craved spending money on frivolous things. That day would come only if I was careful. Ellen was a pretty girl in high school. Now she was developing into a knockout of a woman. She spent some extensive time working on her appearance. She learned how to apply makeup correctly. She started to collect fashionable clothes, by browsing thrift shops mostly. It became easy for me to shop for gifts for Ellen since she would sit me down and tell me what she wanted and in what size. Working full-time on her parents' farm kept her figure very fit as well. Her smaller-sized chest were firm and her figure was lean yet soft. At this point I was trying to balance my career aspirations with my love of Ellen. It was tricky. Danny was allowing me to get some overtime hours which made my paychecks grow nicely. A few months into living together Ellen finally abandoned the farm. Her brother and his wife loved the farm anyway so he would stay and work it and inherit it someday. Ellen got herself a job as a waitress but she hated waiting on people so she quit. Next she tried being a receptionist. The money was crappy but she seemed to like it. She got to dress nicely and the work was easy. It was her mad money that she started spending on clothes, manicures, beauty products, and hair appointments. I had saved up some good money but the apartment was slowing me down. So I bought a single wide in a mediocre park on the outskirts of town. I owned the trailer and the lot rental was cheap so now I'd be saving even more. 
At this point I was working out my next moves. The owner at my work, Danny, was over 60 years old. I figured there were two possibilities, I could open my own shop and be Danny's competition, or I could buy the shop from Danny so he could retire. I had a lot of ideas for his place to make it more efficient, super profitable and to expand. One day I walked in early and sat drinking coffee with Danny. I thanked him for all the training and mentoring he did for me. I broached the subject of me owning my own place. He was upset at the thought of me being his competition until I gave him the other option. He was still a few years from retirement age and worried about having enough money. So I offered a sale price for the business and a percentage of the profit for 10 years. It was an offer he couldn't refuse. I had already been working on financing which took only weeks to complete. It would be an understatement to say Ellen was pissed off at me for spending money to buy a rundown grease shop. I didn't go into details such as how much, otherwise I would be in big trouble for sure unless I simply lied. I'm sure she just assumed I was deep in debt now. Before I took over the shop I took Ellen down to Boston for a very nice and quite expensive dinner followed by a night of clubbing and then spending night at a high-end hotel. Dinner was the highlight since that was when I popped the question. I had been anxious for days leading up to that night. To my unfounded relief she said yes. The ring was very nice and pretty expensive. She was in shock then claimed it must be cubic zirconia. She loved every minute but she kept asking how much it was all costing. The only thing that ever made Ellen nervous was money. I never answered knowing it could spark some irritation on our special night. Babe, I want you to know that I'm going to buy us a big house for our big family. I smiled at her but she went to a face I wasn't expecting. Skeptical? No I mean it, you deserve a really great home where we can raise our kids. Peefed, like we can afford a big house. It's okay honey, any house will be fine. But I could tell by the look in her eyes she was expecting very little. She might even be thinking the trailer park was permanent. We decided to put the wedding together in six months. I suggested some very nice venues but Ellen shot them all down saying they were too expensive. We ended up getting married at her parents' church. The reception was at a restaurant at the lake. It was nice and we kept it small. Months after our wedding our lives started to become routine. Not in a bad way. We did fun things often. We both liked going to Lake Bomacine for some swimming, fishing, boating, and our friends often had parties at the lake. Every time we visited the lake Ellen talked about the famous house on the north end of the lake that was once owned by one of the Marx brothers. It is a stone house that's been there since the 1920s. It's big and classic on a large plot of land. Ellen told me on almost every trip to the lake that she wished she could live there. The house has been in the same family for about 40 years. The Tarians had money and passed the house down several times. It was now owned by Eric Tarian who had been my teacher and basketball coach in high school. I've been to the house several times for basketball get-togethers and I told Eric how much I loved the house. Eric was a mentor and became a friend to me during high school. He knew I was smart but wasn't interested in college that much. He encouraged my love of cars. We worked together on his Jeep that needed a new head gasket. We spent several long days doing the job and became closer in the process. I spent many long weeks improving my shop. We started going to shows all over New England to showcase our work. We won awards and gained loads of recognition. We even ran out of business cards once. Sales were going through the roof. I hired new employees in the office so I could concentrate on the work itself. I hired some new employees in the garage to work on auto body and exhaust customization and added another location nearby for engine modifications with a dyno for maximizing horsepower. I had some bumps in the road but once the team was settled in place the profits started rolling in. I was making a killing and Danny was very happy with his cut. People were bringing us cars from all over New England. Some rich people would bring us just a chassis with an engine and we would turn it into a beautiful creation worth big money. Four years in, Ellen and I were still in the trailer. I was socking away thousands every month. My goal was to buy a big house for cash, no mortgage. I already had put 100000 in the bank, but my dad told me to make my money work for me. So I invested it into the Nasdaq. It was around 1998 and the market took off. Two years later I was doing great. It was time to buy a house. Ellen still thought the business was just getting by. She would visit me now and then after work when the shop was empty and ask me if the business was going to survive. I would chuckle and say, yes babe, I think it's doing just fine. When Ellen's car failed its inspection, 
due to rust of course, I told her to buy a new one. I was too busy to go with her shopping but told her I would check out the car before she signed the paperwork. She wanted to buy a cheap used car but I told her to check out new cars. Again she was sure we couldn't afford it, I got home from the shop late one evening and Ellen wasn't home yet. I made us something to eat while I waited for her to return. Two hours later she finally strolled in with a weird smile, it made me uneasy, where were you, I asked in a nice tone of voice, just car shopping, the last place I went was the Chevy dealership, I checked out some used and some new cars, the salesman was very helpful and even stayed late to help me decide, he let me take a few test drives so it took longer than I thought, I think I found what I want, she stopped to smile at me weirdly again, the hairs on my neck were standing up, Something was off, Ellen was off just a hint, and she seemed to be speaking fluent innuendo. Okay, what is it? When can we go check it out? I was just talking while my brain was analyzing her face. She noticed and turned around to get a plate of dinner. We can go tomorrow if you have any time. Alright tomorrow then, I'll skip out of work early and pick you up. She nodded with a mouth full of food. I dropped Ellen at the front of Tanner Chevrolet on a rainy day, then found parking. I wandered in the side door ending up in the parts department where they pointed me towards the showroom. I got to the sales floor and saw Ellen standing next to the salesman. She looked towards the double front doors where I should have been entering. When she didn't see me she ran a hand up this guy's chest smiling. I decided to stand still watching what else might happen. My blood pressure went sky high. If it were me I'd be on high alert but not seeing me anywhere she leaned toward his ear and whispered something. He ran his hand down her arm and almost held her hand. This, this is what my spidey senses were detecting. Flirting? No it was more than that. This was past the flirting stage. They have something going on or about to. I decided to go back out and enter the front doors. The salesman gave me a big smile, stuck out his hand, and said, this must be Mr. Reynolds. I've heard a lot about you. May I call you Rob? No. I left him hanging on the handshake as well. It took him by surprise. He was just about to call me Rob. He hesitated then, all right then Mr. Reynolds. My name is Mark. Ellen has shown some interest in a couple cars on our lot. I understand you want to take a look before she commits? I nodded. Now Mr. Reynolds, I make a lot of money at this job, but for you I can get a 10% discount right off the top since I don't need the whole commission. I don't think I would have liked this guy even if he wasn't hitting on my wife. What a... He had a Burt Reynolds stash and straight girly looking hair with bangs parted in the middle. He was wearing a shiny silk shirt under a sport coat and polyester pants. If this was a discotheque he'd have fit in well. He was in okay shape but I'd bet my life he couldn't take a punch. If he didn't stop smiling at me I'd get the chance to find out. We looked at a brand new Chevy Cavalier which I nixed. I told him I hate Chevrolets. I actually love Chevys, I drive a Chevy truck. Ellen looked at me and knew something was wrong. Then he took me to the used lot and showed me a Toyota. Sorry, no Japanese steel. With that I grabbed Ellen's hand and walked out. What the heck? What's your problem? Why are you being such an? You love Chevys. I didn't respond. We got in the truck and I told Ellen I would buy the car for her myself. I wasn't sure I even wanted her to have a car now. But she has a job so. A few days later before the registration ran out on the old car. I got her a brand new Chrysler Voyager minivan. I was planning ahead for children. Ellen didn't like it but I didn't care. You spent all that money on a van? I didn't respond. As it turned out we weren't on very good speaking terms for a while so the family wasn't getting started yet. One day I decided to air my concerns with Ellen. She was getting dressed to go out. So where are you heading out to? I must have taken her by surprise, I usually gave her freedom to do whatever she wanted without question. She had to think for a second. Just a little shopping, she said looking nervous. Well could I join you? We haven't spent much time together lately. Shopping? You hate shopping and you just slow me down and be bored. I was getting mad. Okay then, just make sure you don't do anything I wouldn't do. It was a veiled threat I hoped would keep her in line. Even though we were back on better speaking terms, our personal life had become non-existent. I threw myself into my work for a few weeks hoping that things would just work themselves out. So I'm at the shop and we get this yellow Corvette that needs a new paint job. I look at the owner and it's the Chevy dealership. It put an immediate knot in my stomach. We did a really nice job on it, as usual, and that Mark came to pick it up. 
He didn't see me but I could hear him saying how great the car looked. Now that's what I call a girl magnet, he laughed loudly all by himself. My office lady was horrified and barely kept her composure as she handed over the keys. When he left the lot he made a show of burning out into the road. I sat Ellen down one night to clear the air, I wanted to know why we weren't having you know what anymore. She shut down on me though, I couldn't get her to talk about it, do you still love me, do you want out, I asked, of course I love you, she replied but her face was telling me there was trouble. She started to come home late all the time saying she went for drinks with the girls or had some errands. Well now I had plenty of money to buy a house but I was apprehensive to do that until I had some answers. I hired my buddy Kenny from high school who became a cop but also did private investigating on the side. I told him how worried I was about my wife. He told me he was sorry about my situation but that he would have no problem getting the answers I wanted. I needed answers before I got Ellen pregnant or bought a house. Unfortunately she could take most of my money if things went south. Kenny said he would spend one week looking into things and then give me a report. Then I could pay him to continue or end the investigation right then. He said most of his cases are complete in one or two weeks. I was nervous for a week thinking about all the possibilities but I also tried to give Ellen enough rope to hang herself. I would tell her in the morning I had a lot of work and would be late getting home and that she should get her own dinner. At the end of the week Kenny came to the shop and we commandeered an office. He looked grim. That bad? Adrenaline shot through my veins and my stomach started going sour. I need a drink. I went to my secret stash of Jameson's and poured a double, setting it in front of Kenny. He downed it and I took three glugs from the bottle. Kenny threw the report in front of me. That their buddy is everything you didn't want to know. I nodded and took another pull from the bottle then poured another shot for Kenny. I battled my need to cry. Who? The guy's name is Mark Stokes. Works at Tanner Chevrolet and drives a fancy looking candy apple red Corvette which I assume is compensating for his tiny personality. I spent some time at the dealership and got some interesting information. Turns out he has had several affairs with married women. Rumor has it he is involved with the owner's wife as well. Senator Tanner's wife? Oh heck. This was interesting to say the least. The cogs were turning but even in my fogged up brain this was too easy. What idiot messes with a senator's wife? Goddamn, playing with fire. Turns out I might not need to do anything illegal to heck him up. I thanked Kenny and gave him a bonus for doing a great job. I headed home with a heavy heart. I still hadn't looked at any of the evidence. When I got home I started thumbing through the photos in the file. They started on a day I knew Ellen had told me she was out with the girls. I could tell by her dress. Instead she was kissing Mark's face. Then she got into his girl magnet. The next photo was them arriving at the lake at a pretty nice lake house. From the photos it seemed this same scenario occurred at least three other times. There was also a VHS tape that I now slapped into the player. It seemed to be looking into a bedroom of the same lake house. Wow Kenny, how did you manage that? I thought, about a minute into the recording, Ellen walks into the room with the that guy right behind her. My heart palpitated when I realized there was audio as well. You are so hot, you want to be on top again? Mark asked. My stomach was churning hard. I was in a fit of rage. I wanted to break something but thought it was counterproductive. That was great but I was thinking another today. Ellen responded as my whole world crumbled before my eyes. She was undressing but had no underwear on. That hecking s, I said to myself. I watched Mark expose his you know what. Kenny was right, he did have a small but Ellen made it seem like he was the best lover ever. She had an ending? No, I could tell it wasn't real. She was faking it, I was prepared to get a divorce and lose a big chunk of cash. Whatever, start over single and continue making money. I made an appointment with an attorney my father recommended. My dad was devastated by the news and felt awful for me. I asked him to keep it between us for now. I didn't need my mom begging me to reconcile. When I got off the phone I heard a loud car pull up to the trailer. It was the Corvette. Ellen got out of the passenger side and came in the house. Well, 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 where have you been today? I spat. She looked at me with what looked like sympathy. I'm so sorry Rob, things have changed. I really do love you but, but you're doing something with someone else? She nodded. Nice Ellen, but why? I loved you too but now this bad. What happened? She cleared her throat then said, I've been poor all my life. I met someone that can change that. I don't think I love him but I want a comfortable life. 
I shrugged my shoulders. So that's it? You want money over love? Yes, I'm sorry for hurting you. She threw a package on top of my evidence of her infidelity. I had a lawyer draw up these divorce papers. I know you can't afford a lawyer or to pay me much so this is a simple, go our separate ways divorce. Just sign it and all you have to pay is the lawyer fees. I was bursting inside. I almost smiled but fought it. I'll take them to a notary tomorrow and have them delivered to the lake house. Her face went pale as she realized I knew more than I should. It's pretty sad you would give up love for money. I never thought you could do such a thing. It hurts me badly but I guess I dodged a cheating bullet. I'd say I hope you and Mark will be happy together but. She looked hurt like she expected me to fight harder for her. She gave me one last kiss and left in that girl magnet. The next day I started informing everyone of my marital status. I reached out to Roy and Anne to give them the bad news since Ellen hadn't yet. They were furious with their daughter. Roy said he was heartbroken to lose such a great son-in-law and Anne just cried after saying she was humiliated by what Ellen did. Apparently Ellen had the balls to bring Mark to her parents' farm so they could meet her friend. Roy said he didn't like the arrogant prick and he knew something bad was happening. One of my regular customers set me up on a blind date so we ended up at the lake. After a casual lunch at the dog, we headed out on the lake. I stopped at Crystal Beach to see if any friends were around. We had a picnic lunch and some beer. Just as we were leaving I ran into Eric. He looked pale. I introduced him to Pam and we started talking about my marriage woes. You know my wife cheated on me. I divorced her of course but we had a prenup so she got nothing out of it. I never could trust another woman enough to get married again. Jesus Eric, I'm sorry. I never knew that. That's because I never talked about it. Anyway, I was just visiting some of my favorite places before I go into hospice care. Heck and cancer got me, Eric no. Heck me. God I'm so sorry. Can I do anything for you? He shook his head. It's alright. I've made my peace. You were one of the good ones. Thank you for the memories. By the way that house you love so much is now going up for sale. I doubt you have that kind of money but I have no kids or siblings to pass it on to. My uncle would inherit everything but he's in California and doesn't want the house. I figured I'd liquidate it for him. It sure would be nice to know someone I like got the house. I would give you a hefty discount if you wanted it. I dropped off my date with a peck on the cheek. She was nice, maybe too nice for me. I like a little more spice. Maybe that was my problem. I called Eric and discussed business. Long story short he gave me a great deal so that I could own his house next. I would have a mortgage after all but I was making big money now. I was beyond grateful but still very sad to be losing a friend and mentor. I resolved to visit him in hospice frequently. My business was crazy busy. Everybody knew who we were. I had to hire more expert artists which wasn't as hard as I thought. It seemed like artists don't like to starve. The first person through my door to apply as an artist was a woman. Not a typical woman. Michelle wouldn't look out of place these days but in 1999 she stood out. Not just that she was into cars but because she was also into tattoos, body piercings, and leather. She was a tiny thing but she wore heels to boost her to close to a normal height. Her hair was jet black, dyed I assumed, and her skin was pale like so many Vermonters. Once I got past her eccentricities, I noticed her shapely ass and cute little B-cup chest. I gave her a tryout project that took her two days. It wasn't complete in two days but it was far enough along to see her talent. The quality was amazing, better than anything I've ever done. Obviously I hired her immediately for enough money to keep her around until she asked for more. She was something else, I couldn't help staring at her. She was a living work of art and I wanted to use every one of my senses to take in this masterpiece. The part one hadn't immediately noticed was how smart and funny she was. My office lady, Janet, came up to me as I was staring one day and said, you know you could have her if you wanted. I blushed from being caught staring. Am I wrong or is she something very special? No honey, you're not wrong. And I think you should snatch her up before someone else does. She talks about you all the time. I nodded. I stopped by the dealership looking to touch base with the senator. They wouldn't give me his contact info so I contacted him the way any voter, taxpayer would, email. I didn't know if anyone even read those things. What senator gives a heck what any individual person thinks? My email said, Senator Tanner, I have important information about your wife. I left my contact information expecting to never hear back from anyone. I got a phone call the next day. 
Me hello caller do not say my name. You should know who this is. Me yes, I think I do. Caller I think you have some information for me. Me yes, I think you should know that your wife is most likely having an affair with someone at the dealership. Caller that's a problem, how did you find out? Me the same man has taken up with my soon to be ex-wife. While investigating my wife I heard rumors about your wife with the same guy. I don't have proof but I thought you should know. Caller thank you for that. I will take care of the A if you never mention this conversation. Who is it? Me he's a salesman named Mark Stokes. Caller oh yeah, I know that piece of crap. Thinks he's God's gift to women. My wife is stupid, I can't wait to destroy him. Listen, whatever happens, you just sit back and enjoy. Most of all keep your trap shut. Me you don't have to worry about me. I will enjoy every second. I closed on the house the day of my ex-anniversary. It was a great distraction from my crushing sorrow, but the house was partly supposed to be for Ellen. It was going to be a surprise for our anniversary. Now the big house I had promised her turned out to be the best house in the whole county. She would have been so excited and happy. But would she have been happy just because of the house? I'm rambling. My brain is in the fog of the recent breakup. Nothing about Ellen matters anymore. She broke us up in a way that brought finality. A few people from work including Michelle helped me get moved into my new home. I had a keg and fired up the barbecue so that after the shop closed everyone could come hang out together. It's always nice to party with your coworkers once in a while. The best part of the night was when I realized Michelle was staying close to me. At first I chalked it up to anxiety since she was new in our group, but she had already made fast friends of every person at the shop. She's very outgoing and not at all shy. Some people started heading home either with designated drivers or someone picking them up. Ellen at this point sat next to me on a sofa where we were talking about an upcoming show we would be attending. I pulled her in for a hug. You have to come with me to Albany. I'm entering some of your gas tanks in the motorcycle competition. I smiled at her but didn't let her out of the hug yet. She leaned into me and relaxed against my chest with her head on my shoulder. One of my body shop guys stumbled into the room slurring his words. Jerry, you have a ride home buddy? I asked. No man, I sh gonna juice drive slow. I laughed. You're staying the night, okay? He just plopped himself in a recliner and passed out in minutes. Michelle, still cuddling me, coughed then said, Um, I'm pretty drunk too. Can I stay the night too? Everyone in the room laughed. I smiled widely. You can stay but just be aware that I don't take advantage of drunk. Michelle frowned. Ah, I'm not that drunk. I scratched my head. I'll tell you what. If you're a good guest I will buy you dinner tomorrow night and we can come back here sober and alone if you want to. Everyone in the room cheered. I guess they all knew something I didn't. I wanted our first date to be special so I took her to dinner in Burlington. I know, it's a long drive for dinner, but we've both been to every mediocre restaurant in Rutland. The place in Burlington was amazing if not expensive. There was a dance floor in the next room with a beautiful jazz band playing so we danced. I wasn't looking forward to the long drive home since we had stayed pretty late. I asked if she wanted to get a couple hotel rooms. She snickered. I'd rather get one room with one bed, she said grinning. As we entered the room, Michelle unzipped her. Her tiny figure looked beautiful. I had never seen or even known this kind of cloth existed. I thought she had no cloth on until she turned around. Oh my lord, you are so sexy. I noticed something stuck on her. She unclasped the cloth and dropped it. I was shocked to see her figure. My feelings was awkwardly standing straight up. I walked over and ran my hands over her. As I kissed her, she began undressing me. We finally made it to the bed and collapsed as Michelle giggled. I slid my hand. Another piercing I didn't know was possible. I played with the ring. I removed the clothes in one quick move. I had never experienced this with a woman that was so accomplished at you know what. In literally seconds I stopped her. Let's stop. Sorry. Baby, just give it up. It won't be the last time. Now, I had only had this kind of feeling with one woman before so my experience was limited but Michelle seemed impossibly proficient at this just minutes into our first encounter. I must have looked disappointed. What's the matter? I probably looked and sounded like a toddler that wanted some candy. I was hoping to get more tonight, that's all. She scoffed at me, you think we're done? It's 11 p.m., now get on your back. I did as she commanded because I had no idea where this train was heading and I didn't care. Michelle was my engineer and I was along for the ride. She wasn't shy, I learned how to get around. 
I think she was just as proud as I was. I couldn't wait until the next time. We silently repositioned. She seemed so experienced, wow. I've needed this for a long time, she shouted right on cue. I made a mental note not to judge people by their appearance. Again she made amazing sounds. She was enjoying, woohoo. The sun came up as we gave up since it was useless anymore. We slept all wrapped up together. I couldn't get over how much I loved having her in my arms. I got a lot of grief at work when I strolled in after lunchtime. Everyone knew why and seemed to be genuinely happy for me. The next day I got a call from my soon-to-be ex-wife. She told me the divorce had gone through quickly since it was so simple. I was glad to hear that. I didn't want to get personal with her anymore but still asked, how are things with you? She sniffled like she had been holding back crying the whole time. Not very good, I thought the guy had money but the lake house we stayed at wasn't even his like he said. It's his aunt's house, and that Corvette he was driving isn't his either. That's just a car he was allowed to drive around for a while. He has a rusty old Toyota and has a studio in town. He never was planning to stay with me. He just wanted to spend some time with me as long as he could before I found out he's a loser. Oh, that bad. If it makes you feel better he's going to be even worse off really soon, I said feeling bad that I was smiling. I honestly felt some pity for Ellen. No, it doesn't make me feel any better. I hecked up so bad. Why did I leave someone that loved me? I don't care that you live in a trailer. I should have stayed with you but it's too late now. I lost my husband and my best friend. I know you, you would never let me back into your life after what I did. Ellen, I have to tell you something but before I do I want you to know I don't hate you. I'm just very disappointed you destroyed our relationship. Listen, I have to tell you something that might piss you off. It's wicked awesome for me though. What is it? She sniffled. When you left me for that dink I was pretty depressed. But now I'm not that sad anymore. I just bought the Nishobe house from Eric Tarion. Ellen gasped, what the, how, that's not possible. Well Eric is dying. He gave me a nice deal but I already had a ton of money saved. I know this is going to piss you off but I was saving money so I could surprise you by buying a big house. I told you I was going to buy you a big house to raise our kids, remember? I guess you didn't believe me. The shop has been a huge success and I'm becoming very well off. Heck, heck, heck why am I such a, she screamed, I don't suppose you would ever forgive me? I was just stupid and blinded by money. Yeah, I said as Ellen breathed in hopefully, that's never gonna happen. Now that I have money you want me back? That ship has sailed, I might even have a new girlfriend now, so no, sorry. I understand, she uttered dejectedly. How about a job then? Nope, my new girlfriend works there. Not happening, EXs should go no contact unless kids are involved. Thank god that's not a problem. You know today would have been the day I suggested we start trying for a baby. It's just so depressing, I'm sure I'll see you around so maybe you can meet Michelle. I still love your parents so I'll be out to the farm too. She started crying full on now. I'm gonna have to live on the farm, she screamed. I have nothing, you ripped me off, you knew I was losing money in the divorce and you let me do it. You're right, I did rip you off. But you threw those divorce papers in my face like you couldn't get away from me fast enough, so tough. I am willing to do one nice thing for you though for old times sake. What's that, I'll let you keep the trailer if you want it. It's paid off, you just have to pay lot fees. But I'll still own it. You can go back to waiting tables, that's good money. Maybe you'll meet a sugar daddy there. Heck, the whole reason I left you was to get out of that trailer, and I hate waiting tables. Good, that sounds like poetic justice, I said in a happy voice. After some time Michelle won first place at her first show ever. I got second place in the auto category and couldn't be happier. Only four months into our relationship Michelle moved in with me. We each assumed marriage was inevitable. Planning a life together while owning a business is hard to say the least, my time was split unevenly between work and Michelle. We agreed on having at least two kids but we would wait a few years to start so our career timing made sense. I saw Ellen around town quite often since we grocery shop at the same Grand Union. She met Michelle and stayed very cordial and accepting of her appearance. She never again attempted to get back together. We discussed the fact that I would remain friends with her parents so we would probably cross paths often. I suggested we remain friends since that's how we had started. Months later I ran into her shopping with a man. She introduced him as her boyfriend. He was handsome and well-built and we talked some.
Before you feel the need to warn me about Ellen, Darren interjected, you should know she came clean. I know everything she did. She was heartbroken and remorseful about it. I believe she has learned her lesson. She went to therapy and has a better relationship with money these days. I got the feeling her new squeeze was actually a good guy. Darren, I'm happy that she told you everything and I'm over it now. Ellen and I were best friends forever. I still want her to be happy so good luck with your relationship. She is an amazing woman that I would have been thrilled to spend my life with. I shook hands with him and he smiled. Ellen was crying by his side. Mark was fired from the dealership almost immediately. Nothing was ever heard about his affair with the senator's wife. Unfortunately for Mark, something was found on his computer. I received another call from the mysterious voice informing me that Mark wasn't set up he was just exposed. He would go to prison. It was the easiest payback I could have imagined. I brought Michelle out to the farm to meet Ellen's parents. I couldn't throw away such great friends. I got an invite for a traditional New England boiled dinner at the farm and asked if I could bring a plus one. They loved Michelle as much as they loved me. It was awkward at first introducing them as friends, instead of my in-laws. We spoke very little about Ellen that night or any other time we got together. It was all about the farm, the state fair, and cars. Although the big news was Roy starting his own meat curing and smoking business. I begged them to let Michelle and I help with the state fair every year. They graciously agreed. Ellen and Darren ended up getting married. I was surprised to receive an invite to the wedding. Michelle said, she was your best friend, I think we should go. I agree, it should be fun. We did have fun since I knew about half the people there and met some new friends as well. We gave the newlyweds a traditional gift as well as the deed to my trailer. Not only could they live in it but they could sell it or rent it for extra cash. I thought that would be apropos and something Ellen would appreciate. I ended up opening a second location for my business in Portsmouth, New Hampshire to make it easier access for customers from Maine and Southern New England. This location only had one business. We strictly took old classic cars and pickups from customers that wanted them transformed into top-tier auto show quality pieces. It did cannibalize some business from Rutland but they were both as busy as we could handle. I married Michelle just before our grand opening in Portsmouth. She wanted a very non-traditional wedding and I wasn't going to argue. I'd been through a traditional wedding already and once was enough. Michelle wanted to invite Ellen and Darren since we had gone to their wedding. The debate was over quickly with Michelle prevailing. I made a suggestion for the wedding that Michelle fell in love with. We invited everyone we knew. We said our vows on the dock of my home in the late morning. My friend Greg owns a catering business that does pig roasts. So we tried to buy a pig from Roy and Anne for the reception in my front yard. They refused money and gave us the pig as our wedding present instead. Greg put together a fantastic spread as a buffet line. We set up four kegs of beer and a wine bar. We hired a traditional Appalachian mountain folk band for entertainment. A dance area was roped off which ended up being way too small. I took down the ropes so everyone could just dance anywhere, and they did. I had to pay extra to keep the band late into the night since nobody wanted to leave. In the field behind my house we set up as many tents as I could scrounge up and borrow. We offered guests to either bring tents or use one of ours so they could stay the night. Some of the older guests including Roy and Anne were offered rooms in the house. At our reception I had the chance to have a conversation with Darren. He seemed very happy with his marriage. At the same time, Ellen sat next to Michelle talking for a few minutes before bursting into tears and hugging Michelle. Afterwards Michelle told me that Ellen is ashamed of what happened to this day and asked her to relay her most sincere apology and love. She is happy that I found such a wonderful woman to spend my life with. She also asked Michelle to take good care of me. The morning after we had a different catering company provide breakfast for our guests before they left. Michelle and I were packed and ready to leave for a week in Hawaii getting back in time to open my Portsmouth shop. We were up very early after such a late night but we had to make Boston by 10 a.m. and I don't like cutting things close just in case. Some of my guests were free to stay all week and enjoy the lake in mid-July. My friend, James from next door agreed to stay the week and watch the place and entertain as necessary. Drive the boat, etc. As we reached my car I noticed Ellen and Darren packing up to leave. I said, you two sure are up early. Darren said, I tried to convince her that it was fine to be here but she was concerned that I might think she still carried a torch for you. She wanted to leave last night but I convinced her to at least stay the night. 
I took a step toward Ellen and hugged her. We are still friends, okay? But I don't think anyone here believes we could go back to being lovers. Let's just let bygones be bygones and keep being friends. That way we can still love each other, just in a different way. Ellen nodded. Okay Rob, I love you. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. Now go have a nice honeymoon. Make sure to like this video if you want the next part of the story.